Yeah, I mean. I feel like we should. No, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, for him, there's such an impressed for everybody's here. We're probably blood. I don't want to start any trouble. <laughs> you don't like Pay respect here. We won't, we won't do anything. We weren't going to start. Uh, the, hey, they wanted to start. I said, no way. No, I'm I just said. taking the, you guys <laughs> See, I, I created a headline right there. Right. <laughs> Uh, we lost. We, we we lost against our rivals. Saint Ed's beat Ignatius. Yeah. Yeah. Back when I played, the Gold Brothers were over there. Yeah. Sure. And, uh, oh, that's right. Big time. <laughs> yeah. That was the greatest the DCL back then. That's right. Great Catholic. Great players, players come out of there, man. Yeah. Yeah. Gary Jeter. That's our guy. But yeah, and then Bill Angel of St. Joe's had all those guys come out of there. Yeah. yeah Gerbach yeah. and Howard and. Yeah, Desmond. Clark He's Kellogg. Kellogg. Oh, yeah. Cleveland Heights. Cleveland oh, yeah. Kellogg played with us. I was at that point. Sorry, we're just reminiscing. <laughs> Dean Lennon, I should just get coffee some other time. I'm enjoying hearing more about this. That's, that's no doubt. It's more interesting than me, I can promise you that. That's when I was slipper, yeah. That's right. I've lost my train of thought. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, I know how tough you were at Louisville. They were Louisville people talk about that all the time. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not smart, but tough. Uh, so to talk a little bit about the ball, how, how, do, you, how do you work on a guy who's dropping passes? Like, how, how do you rep that and drill that and mentally? Can that, is that a mental thing that just needs to get past, or is that a physical thing that can be worked on? Yeah, I mean, again, I think in any course of any game, things happen, right, for whatever reason. Um, I go back specifically to pass catching when, I had the, the chance and opportunity, thankfully, to coach receivers in this league. And it's one where, again, it's more about the process than the result. So you, you go through and say, hey, fundamentally for anybody, right? Were you in the right place? Eyes, hands, everything else. Um, so it's not something that you sit there and you, you beat over anybody's head. You go through and, again, it's no intention for anybody to throw an incompletion, miss a block, or any of those things that happen. Um, again, they occur. You'd like them not to occur for every position, uh, but you just go back and you stress the fundamentals of the position. I think that's for anything and anything you do when there's an error. And this is maybe a completely different question, but when you were playing quarterback and you were getting sacked, how confident were you of the ball? And how confident were you of where maybe the defender was hitting you to sure. try and knock the ball out? That's a good question. I do think, though, it goes back to the fact of um, – it's how you train in the pocket. So it, during the course of the week, training camp, everything else, um, it's how your ball location, when someone's near you, you constantly practice bringing that ball in tighter. Um, you're obviously aware the defense is trying to get after the football, specifically when they're around you, and maybe they can't make the sack and they're being blocked, but they try to go with the arm swipe. Uh, but the reality is you hope that your fundamentals and mechanics take over because like in anything, in any position, you start thinking about things like that, you're probably losing focus on anything else down the field. So, um, again, it, it goes back to training. Was there something that, when you're watching film on guys, uh, as a coach, which, again, this is more during the playing days, mm -hmm. when you're watching film on guys, you can say, oh, wow, this guy, this defender, I know if he's coming at me, I need to be even more hard enough to be good at swiping the ball. Yeah, I mean... Again, I'm not sure I'm the greatest playing career guy to go back to. I was really good with the clipboard there, D-Led. Um, but to your point, to your point, when you are watching film, yeah, obviously, like, it's human nature to watch all the positions when you're playing quarterback. I think what you can get into a little bit of a, um, a place you don't want to go to is if you're all of a sudden get enamored with that X player who's making great plays and he's constantly second. Like, then, again, it goes back to the fact of you're out there to play the play. If you're out, sometimes when you're thinking about the wrong things, it could lead to the result you don't want. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, I think you're aware of what's around you, but you don't want to consume you. I know, I mean, last I checked, you were pretty good college quarterback. Yeah. Just, I think, I think you and my siblings and my kids think that. Everybody else is like, who is that guy? So I'm, I'm well aware and okay with it. I heard Bill Ryan's Bill's Yeah, we're, we're rehashing stuff. Look. <laughs> What do you, uh, you know, see uh, when you and the coach are getting ready for the Jets defense over there? Yeah, so, again, 
I'm not trying to be a broken record, but when you put that film on, you, you get 11 guys who are playing extremely hard. Um, and, it's, and it's not just one section of the defense. Um, it's all levels of the defense. Um, they do a great job of playing fast. So it's one thing to play hard and physical, no doubt about it. That's obviously, uh, I'm sure most defensive coordinators would like their defense to play that way. But when you see the speed off the ball, uh, how they react to things um, at all levels, uh, have a ton of respect for what they're putting together, what they're doing. Um, you know, I've known, I've known their head coach for when I was a player back in Houston. I mean, it goes back that long. Um, I have nothing but respect for what he and their defensive staff uh, is trying to build there and what they're putting on film is, is obviously they're doing a great job in, in situational football, first and second down, and they've got those guys playing at, at a pretty high level right now. You took uh, first up about the coordinator rush, and then Rankin's talking about he's uh, Batman when he gets on the field. And sure. He, <laughs> that's that's a Louisville pride right there. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, again, I think you can go down the, the list of guys yeah. um, through the defensive line, the linebackers, uh, and the safety and corners position, especially the nickel when they go in the sub defense. And again, I just think it's it's a mindset they have over there um, of how they're playing. They're playing confident. Uh, you can tell that in the last, last week's ball game uh, against a very good Titans team. Uh, and they played them all the way through that game and they played them tough. You talked about a guy who has great hands. Are there mental or physical traits that those people share when you guys who go through their career with the, they never drop a ball? You know, I, I've been around, you know, all different types of receivers and tight ends and running backs. Um, and I think the really good ones I've been around to the ones who don't make it for other reasons, it usually just comes down to the work ethic and fundamentals. And it's a mindset. And so uh, the, regardless of what position uh, they play when they become a pass catcher, it just becomes and that ball's in the air, it's their ball. And they've worked through the week, off season. It's a mindset. Um, it doesn't mean that the ball doesn't, occasionally fall on the ground. All intentions are great. Um, but I think those guys um, are able to take every snap as a new one. And when the ball comes and when the ball's in the air, they approach it like it's theirs. Is that a skill that you have to evaluate or can you, can you coach it up a wide degree? Or do you I, I, think it's, I think it's part of it. If you're looking at it like an equation, part of it's innate, sure. I think part of it's enabled by the coaches, the mindset. Um, and then there's a third part of, of willing it to, to want to be that. Um, and again, it's different for everyone. All guys get to different spots and all guys have different successes and they get their different ways. But uh, usually it goes, it just goes back to the fundamentals and mindset. Who are the guys you've been around in your career who you were most shocked if the ball hit the ground? Like you just, it never entered your mind that the ball was going to Yeah, sure. Um, on the top of my head, I mean, I go back to when I was in college, it would be Deion Branch. My first couple of years in the NFL would be Andre Johnson teammate. Um, and so it's just, again, I'm sure I'm, I'm leaving guys out just off the top of my head, but it's just the mindset in which, you know, when that ball's in the air or how they attacked it and everything else. But again, they're different sizes, right? Andre was 6'3", Dion was 5'9". He'll probably kill me for saying that. But <laughs> the reality is, you know, it's just different ways to get the job done. Yeah, I think, you know, each week you go into it and this is the National Football League, right? So every opponent you go against has the ability to, um, to obviously take away the football and get to the quarterback. Um, each game is different. The way that teams approach different teams is different. Um, and again, no, it's one of those where we go through the mindset of do your job. If you're throwing the football, be where you're supposed to be. If you're a wide out, tight end and running back, quarterback, throw with anticipation and timing, understand what you're seeing. And again, right, once that ball leaves the quarterback's hands, again, a lot of that stuff is out of your control. If it gets tipped or not get tipped, if it gets, you know, all things that can happen when the ball's in the air. So, again, no, it's more about making sure that we focus on us, understand what the defense is trying to do, but execute the play at a high level. Did y'all feel the offense took some strides with the, I know y'all needed some more, but 374 sure. and the four touchdowns uh, that y'all were able to put together? Yeah, sure. I mean, Again, I think it was a, you look how the fourth quarter of the Giants game played out. I talked to you guys last week about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you look how, you know, for 
parts of our game last week of how we played offensively. Um, when again, I think it just comes back to the fact of us growing together as a staff, growing together with players, getting the, the best idea of how to use guys exactly the right way for they feel comfortable when they're out there. And then guys obviously ultimately having confidence that comes from success of doing it. Um, and you've got a group of guys on the offensive side that really love playing with each other. You've got a bunch of coaches on the offensive side that love working with their players. Um, and again, when you have that kind of um, mindset with the players and the coaches, you know, you hopefully continue to trend upward, and uh, hopefully that's where we're going. Coach, now that we have uh, one more week with Josh Andrews playing quarterback, how's he doing? How's he progressing? Yeah, so obviously through, you know, he had the injury. He comes back. What he's done since he's been back is, is done a great job of bringing energy and competing in practice and the individual part of it. Um, and I know the guys in the offensive line group and other guys in the offense specifically love having him back. He brings great energy. He's a veteran guy. Um, so, again, I think it's just another piece back in the puzzle, and we'll see how it all shakes out. And I know you're probably obviously not going to tell us which way you're going, whether it's Andrews or Mayfield, but just maybe take a step back to last week and kind of where you see Jalen in, you know, that fourth week of sure. progression. Yeah, and again, all the, all the depth chart things I'm sure Coach Smith will address. But for me, what Jalen is, um, you go into the fact of what he's gone up against and what he'll go against this week if he has a chance to go out there and everything else. And, and to me, you know, you see strides in his game. He's going against different rushers, different guys when he's in run blocking that are using different techniques. They're not all just the same guy he's going against. And so he's learning. And again, I think when you're a rookie in this league, uh, it's different for everyone for sure in terms of the learning curve. But there's really, it's really hard to replace experience. And so every practice rep he gets, every time he gets out there in live, uh, live action, uh, the fact that he's going out there and, and, he's, and he's fighting and he's learning from the things he does well, but he's also learning from the things that he needs to improve on and he's got the right mindset, you hopefully he continues to grow from there. That's a great question. Uh, look, our, our week is basically outside of us now flying internationally here in a couple hours. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right, has been as if it would be a normal week. Um, obviously, with the time difference and flying over there and everything else, you know, you adjust your Friday schedule. Uh, but for me personally, the way I've looked at this week, uh, I try to keep the same routine um, of how I've watched the film and game plan and all those things. So to me, until we get over there, it hasn't been different. Um, was over there a couple years ago in the exact same stadium. Uh, understand the environment. It's a great environment, great atmosphere. Uh, understand the logistics when you go over there, too. It's a little different than here in the U.S. Um, but it, it's a great opportunity for us to go over there and adapt and, and look at it as a great opportunity. Since you've been there and you've played in the stadium before, you talked to guys on surface, playing on different surface modes than just playing. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's something that I'm sure the equipment guys have hit them with. To me, it's more the environment and the atmosphere. Um, it's a great stadium. Uh, the crowd was great when we, uh, when we played there a few years ago. Um, they're into it, and they're into it for both sides. Uh, so, again, I think it's, if you haven't been over there as a player, as a coach, uh, I think you're in for a great treat. Uh, if you've been over there, you kind of know what to expect, but it's, it's an awesome opportunity for us to go over there and, and play uh, internationally and represent the NFL. Was there a moment when you were over there on the field that still really sticks out to you? Like, oh, I well, you know, it's interesting for me personally because I had, you know, four months of NFL Europe experience, right? So I didn't play in London, uh, but used to how the international crowds uh, were at that time back in the early 2000s. And the, obviously football has just grown from that standpoint. Uh, you love the pageantry. You love the fans that come out. They're energetic and from pregame all the way through. And it's, it's just a cool environment. It's a cool experience. What was it like when you were in that kind of environment? Was it like a lot of cowbells. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> You, again, you'd be at the home, you're a home team, and all of a sudden it's third down and they're screaming and you can't hear anything and you're almost using silent count here in international. Uh, but, yeah, they, I will say this, the passion's real. I'm a huge international soccer fan. Um, parents grew up in Italy, so I was kind of forced to, uh, to watch a lot of Italian soccer as a kid. Um, but I've grown an appreciation for their passion and, and how they approach sports over there. Wait, what, what was their side? What was their side? Oh, for, for Italy? Yeah, it depends who's winning. 
So my dad would go from Roma to Juventus to AC Milan. Uh, he grew up, my parents grew up so, uh, southern Italy, and they spent about 30 years of their life before they moved here. So there was definitely there was an allegiance to, to anything south of Rome at times. So you didn't have, you didn't have a team that you were... No, it was I was winning. Front running, basically. <laughs> That's how I learned how to do it then as a kid. You guys got anything else? All right. Thanks, guys. Right. Appreciate it, man.